over here to your right. You do have uh, a little bit of a larger crowd over there by the north side of the Senate side of the Capitol, uh, where we saw smoke grenades going off and the crowd kind of pushed back that way a short time ago. But it looks like that has calmed down as well. So, you know, we could see a calming of uh, the situation here on the east side of the Capitol. We're also monitoring the situation on the west side of the Capitol, where it was very, very tense uh, earlier today, as it was here. You know, we're standing in an area right now that was, when we got here this morning, it was barricaded off completely. You couldn't, I mean, there were police all over the place. There were bike rack barricades. There were several other barricades. And you got the sense that you just couldn't penetrate it. But... view themselves as patriots, these Trump supporters, and when I asked them why, what they thought they were achieving by being here, by doing all of this, this violence, they said that they wanted to win back the election, and some of them are still living in this alternate reality, this alternate universe, where they believe that Joe Biden is not going to be inaugurated up on the, that rising in just two weeks' time. And we'll, there is a sense here on the ground that it isn't over um, in terms of both uh, trying to overturn the election, which is obviously a fantasy, uh, but also that there could be more trouble to come here in Washington tonight. Uh, my uh, producer overheard somebody saying as we were walking in here, it's going to get real tonight. Wolf. Yeah, I suspect, uh, Donnie, it's going to get uh, even more intense in the next few days as we get closer and closer to the January 20th inauguration of the next president of the United States, Joe Biden. Uh, Alex Marquardt, you're, you're getting some more information. Update our viewers. 
Well, Wolf, uh, we've uh, moved back a little bit because since we spoke to you last, uh, a large crowd of these rioters, a mob of them, descended on the press area where we were. I believe that was the area that our colleague Pete Montine was talking about. Clearly not fans of the way that, that we were, have been depicting them, which is uh, a, a mob of, of violent rioters. And so now the question becomes, when does law enforcement go in and clear this area? It has just been a surreal afternoon watching this crowd go in and get into the Capitol building. So what we've seen over the course of the past couple hours is different kinds of law enforcement gathering around the Capitol. What you're seeing right here is Metropolitan Police Department, so Washington Police. As you've been noting, uh, Wolf, we are under an hour now from the curfew. Uh, it is not clear whether they plan on going uh, in and helping clear out those riders before the curfew, but that is certainly what we have seen in the past when there has been a curfew in this city. Now, there has been a steady stream of riders coming uh, from this northern side of the Capitol building where they have been gathering for most of the afternoon, but there is still a significant contingent of them. Uh, and, and as you've heard from our other colleagues, many have said that they plan to stay here. Uh, and as, you, as someone was just mentioning, uh, that it may get real overnight. I want to point out uh, some of these rioters who are coming out from here. These are, I believe, uh, Oath Keepers. Um, we have seen members of that far-right extremist group uh, that supports the president out here this afternoon shouting insults at us, at members of the press, shouting insults at members of law enforcement, uh, of the police. Things have been relatively quiet for uh, a, a little while now. But as I was saying to you in our last time we spoke, this is still very much a standoff. Uh, we have not seen law enforcement go in and clear them out. Rioters are still in there. Law enforcement on the outskirts, on the perimeter uh, of the Capitol building. Uh, and we will see what happens as we get closer to this curfew at 6 p.m. Uh, in just under an hour's time. Look at this scene, Wolf, here. Uh, this is more what I believe is a Metropolitan Police. These guys are very much in riot gear, as you can see, uh, head to toe uh, with protection, helmets on, uh, batons at the ready. They are going down Delaware Avenue, um, and we understand that there is all sorts of coordination going on between local law enforcement, federal law enforcement, uh, the Capitol law enforcement, to clear out these rioters from the Capitol building, Wolf. And I, I assume uh, it's going to, Alice, it's only going to get more intense. Uh, we just got a statement from the acting defense secretary, Miller, saying uh, he's had separate conversations with Vice President Pence, Speaker Pelosi, Leader McConnell, Senator Schumer, Representative Hoyer in the House of Representatives, uh, and says this. Let me read it. We have fully activated the D.C. National Guard to assist federal and local law enforcement as they work to peacefully address the situation. We are prepared to provide additional support as necessary and appropriate as requested by local authorities. And then adds with this, our people are sworn to defend the Constitution and our democratic form of government, and they will act accordingly. So we see Capitol Police, we see local police from D.C., uh, police are coming in from Maryland and Virginia, and military personnel, uh, national, national uh, guard troops are coming in as well. We're going to see a whole lot more troops coming in, not just today, but in the next 14 days as we all get ready for the presidential inauguration. Pamela, what else are you learning? Yeah, so I'm going to tell you what we can't see inside the Capitol building right now, and that is law enforcement still clearing out uh, the Capitol building. As we speak, rioters who trespassed went inside. Uh, police are in there right now uh, still trying to, to make sure it is safe, secure, so that legislators can go back and finish their work under the Constitution. Um, as we heard Alex Markhard there say, he's not seeing a lot of activity on the outside in terms of clearing out folks. We're still seeing a lot of protesters there. But I am told from law enforcement that in addition to clearing out riders inside of the Capitol building, they are also clearing them out at the inauguration stage and bleachers. So that is another area where the rioters took over. And I can tell you, um, law enforcement sources I'm speaking with, they are, are gearing up well, for a very long night. As, uh, and I'm sure they're gearing up for a, a very, very long two weeks until the inauguration as well. Caitlin Collins is over at the White House for us. Uh, Caitlin, what else are you learning? 
Well, Wolf, of course, we saw the president after hours of the, his own supporters breaching the halls of the Capitol for the first time in over 200 years in this manner. Finally put out that video earlier after he was urged by several staffers to put out a more forceful statement, something he declined to do and instead for hours complained about the vice president defying him earlier today. We're now seeing even former members of his administration criticize this and say that it actually is the responsibility of President Trump. And that includes his first Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Bossert, someone who has often uh, offered analysis on what's been going on inside the White House, uh, sometimes advice, sometimes criticism, but also sometimes praise. Listen to what he says now, Wolf. He says, this is beyond wrong and illegal. It's un-American. The president undermined American democracy baselessly for months, and as a result, he is culpable for this siege and an utter disgrace. Despite of him, not because of him, police will regain control and prosecute those involved. Of course, let's also look at what his first chief of staff, Reince Priebus, said earlier today. He tweeted calling many of these people domestic terrorists, saying many are criminals and troublemakers, all acting in a manner opposite of patriotism. Wolf, those are much stronger words that you are hearing from the president's former senior staff than you heard from the president himself tonight, who in that video that he finally released. It was his third try commenting on what we've seen unfold in the Capitol today, say that people should go home peacefully, go home. But the president also said, we love you and said that he understood where they were coming from. And of course, baselessly alleged what is at the root out of a lot of this, which are these claims that this election was stolen from him, which of course it is not. That is the only time we've seen the wool, seen the president since uh, that rally earlier today where he was encouraging people to go to Capitol Hill. And so far, we have not heard any other comment from the White House tonight. Wolf. Yeah, in that same video, the president uh, insisted, uh, as he has now for weeks, that the election was stolen. He insists he won in a landslide election. He is still continuing to lie and, in effect, egg on these uh, these rioters yeah. uh, to continue what they're doing. Phil Mattingly is up on Capitol Hill. Phil, what are you seeing? Yeah, Wolf, right now you're seeing really the crowds in the east front try to start to stream out at a pretty steady clip. But I think the biggest thing that I'm hearing right now from lawmakers is they want to finish what they started today. And this goes for both parties. Lawmakers have been texting back and forth with lawmakers that have been in undisclosed locations surrounded by uh, law enforcement officials and tactical gear uh, with, with semi-automatic rifles. They are making clear they want to finish today. Now, the big question that they have, and I think what everybody's waiting for right now, is a couple things. One, they need to ensure that not just the Capitol is completely clear, but we've also seen and heard that law enforcement is sweeping through office buildings as well. He's talked about uh, the alleged pipe bombs uh, in places just outside the Capitol complex. So law enforcement has a bigger job here than just trying to figure out where things stand inside the Capitol building itself. So that's one piece of this. Uh, the other thing uh, as well, and I think this is what a lot of lawmakers are focused on right now, is how quickly can they get back into the chambers and what state are the chambers in? You obviously saw that some of the rioters or trespassers got into the chambers, what they did in those chambers, so that needs to be kind of figured out as well. But I think if there's one thing that has been consistent, and again, I say this from a bipartisan manner from lawmakers I've been talking to over the last hour and a half, they have gone from very rattled, uh, very unsettled about what occurred and how quickly they were moved off the House floor, moved off the Senate floor, and into undisclosed locations, surrounded by law enforcement, into very firmly believing that they want to finish this process and finish this process tonight. And Wolf, I think one other point, had a couple of Democratic senators tweet this out, staffers actually grabbed uh, the, uh, the documents needed to complete the process of tallying the electors uh, for certification on their way while they were rushing out of the United States Senate. So they still have those. And I think one of the concerns in the madness or the rush when this was all happening is what happens if those were left there while uh, these trespassers or, or rioters were on the Senate floor. Uh, the, uh, multiple senators say staff has those. Those are safe. They're ready to go. It's just a matter of when they can actually get inside the chambers and go. As one senator texted me just a short while ago, we're ready to rock and roll. We just need the green light, Wolf. Well, when they reconvene, assuming they reconvene, I don't know if they'll reconvene tonight or tomorrow, whenever, uh, are they simply going to go through and certify what the Electoral College did, uh, in the 50 states and the District of Columbia, and approve the electoral vote uh, naming uh, Joe Biden, the next president of the United States, or will they continue with these objections uh, and try to continue this debate, which is futile? 
Well, this has been, I think, the big question we've all been trying to get answers to over the course of the last several hours. This actually came from a Republican lawmaker who said, I don't know how we can continue to pursue the objections after what just occurred. However, those who were putting up the objections or said they were supporting the objections made very clear their purpose wasn't to overturn the election, despite the fact that they were aligning with the president, who made very clear he was trying to overturn the election and align, uh, align intentionally or not with those who rushed the Capitol who made very clear they were trying to overturn the election. So I don't, I don't have the answer to that right now. I don't know that the lawmakers who are proposing the objections have the answer to that right now. But I can tell you there is a critical and growing mass of lawmakers, including some of those who may have been on the fence about whether or not to support these, some of these objections, that just want to get this done, get this over with, and move on. This has been kind of a splash of cold water in everybody's face. These aren't just words. These aren't just people making things up. This isn't just the media. This is reality. Things got very, very real in very, very close proximity to a lot of lawmakers, particularly in the middle of the pandemic, when you haven't necessarily been able to have town halls, you haven't necessarily been able to meet face-to-face with a lot of people. You only hear uh, from your most dedicated constituents, and on the Republican side, they are all very dedicated to President Trump. This got very real very fast, Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out when they reconvene, when they get things back together again. Uh, because, to be completely frank, Wolf, I, I haven't talked to a lawmaker, including several, and I know you guys spoke to a couple on air, several who were deployed uh, downrange in Iraq or Afghanistan who, uh, who are coming away from this experience uh, pretty shaken about what they saw. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do either. I did see a tweet from uh, Senator Josh Hawley, who's been one of the architects of this uh, futile challenge uh, to what the Electoral College did. And in, in, in that statement that he tweeted, he ended by saying, Congress must get back to work and finish its job. Finish its job. I don't know what that means, uh, but we'll try to figure that out. Uh, Jim Acosta is over at the White House getting more information as well. Yeah. What are you learning, Jim? Uh, well, just a, an update on the state of uh, mind of the president right now and the state of mind of, of staffers inside the White House who are shell-shocked by some of these events uh, up on Capitol Hill. I talked to a White House official just a short time ago who said, you know, before the president released that video, before the president made the decision to call in the National Guard, uh, aides to the president had to go to the president in the Oval Office and almost beg him to, to make these decisions, to beg him uh, to make that video, to record that video, and also to make this decision uh, to call in the National Guard. Why is that important? Because this president is going to be in charge, presumably, for the next 14 days. And if the president can only throw gasoline on the fire, it is going to be up to this this skeletal staff that he has left over here at the White House to go to the president and, and, and get him to try to do the right thing from time to time. I think that is a worrying development. The other thing I heard from a source Uh, familiar with some of the discussions over here is that White House staffers are just uh, horrified by what is going on up on Capitol Hill. But, Wolf, that begs another question. It begs the question, I think we're at a critical stage now, given what we've seen up on the Hill. Do we see resignations from White House staffers? Aren't we at a point now, Wolf, where we should see resignations uh, from White House staffers? Uh, This this, uh, scene that we saw up on the Hill today, the siege on the Capitol, Uh, should be enough, one would think, in a normal world uh, to prompt the resignation of staffers inside a White House, inside administration. Obviously, we haven't seen that at this point. Uh, But, Wolf, you know, talking to another Trump advisor about this, do not expect the president to try to, you know, cool things down over the next 14 days. In the words of this advisor, the president is a, quote, provocateur. He is a, quote, entertainer. He is not a leader. He is not a president. Uh, And he's not going to behave like one for the next 14 days. So um, a a lot of concerns over here at the White House among White House staffers that this president is just not up to the job. He he is up to the job when it comes to fanning the flames and causing this uh, awful scene that we saw up on Capitol Hill today that's still unfolding. Uh, But he is not uh, he is not equipped to uh, take things down a notch unless these staffers go in there and essentially beg him to do it, which is what happened earlier today, Wolf. Yeah, it is so, so awful. Uh, John King is still with us. John, uh, you know, it's uh, so many people are emailing me, texting me. They're accusing the president of actually being an accomplice to what these to what these rioters and these uh, these mobsters uh, were doing up on Capitol Hill. 
Well, again, he will say he did not encourage them to break into the building or to break glass or to violate security rules and go into the chamber or to go into the speaker's office. That's what the president will say. Uh, but the president also encouraged those people to march on the Capitol. The president also keeps saying, even in his third statement today, that video he released, that the election was stolen when it was not. So the president can say or believe what he believes. He can try to rewrite the truth, as he has done almost every day the last four years, uh, but he incited this, encouraged this, and supported this because he wants to continue this fantasy that the election can be overturned. So now, Wolf, here we are, two weeks from the end of the Trump term, and the drama continues, and what you could call domestic terrorism, certainly disruption, uh, illegal conduct uh, continues here, and we're going to watch as the police push this out. So there's a number of interesting political things happening. You have groups uh, like the Lincoln Project, long a, president, a critic of the president, saying he should be impeached in his final two weeks. That's not going to happen, but it's an, you have this political debate again in the final two weeks. You have the National Association of Manufacturers. It's one of the business groups in town uh, that re represents manufacturers, saying the vice president should consider invoking the 25th Amendment and removing the president from office in his final two weeks, all because of this scene, and more importantly, the much more dangerous scene we saw earlier in the daylight hours at the United States Capitol. And to echo what Phil Mattingly just said, I've been in communications with some leadership aides on both sides, both in the Senate, the Republican leadership still in the Senate, and the Democratic leadership in the House about how important both leaders, Speaker Pelosi and Leader McConnell, believe it is to get back in that building tonight and to at least get back, whether they finish tonight, I think is an open question. That depends on whether you have more objections, but they both believe it is absolutely critical to send the signal that you may have disrupted us, you may have knocked us out of the building, but you will not stop us from doing what we came to do today, which is supposed to be a cherished constitutional tradition in the United States, embracing and affirming and accepting the election of Joe Biden as president of the United States. A peaceful transfer of power that's what we've always seen. Uh, Alex Marquardt, what's going on where you are, Alex? Well, Wolf, we are back on the western side of the Capitol. What you can hear there is a flashbang, uh, presumably from this police force that has just moved in. Wolf, what you're looking at now is what, a metropolitan uh, police from Washington, D.C., who just before this 6 p.m. curfew have moved in here to push out the rioters. They have been shouting, move back at this crowd of hundreds, if not more, Trump supporters on the western side of the Capitol building. This, Wolf, is where in exactly 14 days' time, President-elect Biden will be inaugurated. In the background, you can see the Washington Monument. The police have now decided, after several hours of these this huge mass gathering on the western side of the Capitol to flush them out. Uh, we have heard reports of tear gas. I have not seen that uh, in the last few moments, but there's no question that the Metropolitan Police Department, as well as the other law enforcement agencies, will not hesitate. Here we are, we're being asked to move back. Yes, officer, we will. Uh, you can see this officer, for example, fully equipped with riot control gear. And as I was saying, Wolf, we do not get the impression that they will hesitate to use those riot control measures to get these masses of rioters away from the Capitol, which they attacked and have been, uh, which they got into uh, over the course of the afternoon, Wolf. Yeah, they should use uh, all means uh, necessary to get this under control. This is a disgrace, what's going on up on Capitol Hill right now. Uh, just be careful over there. You know, we'll stay in very close uh, touch with you, Alex. And we can see crowds are still there, John King. Uh, we can see them. They're beginning to leave. But it's, uh, it's a really dangerous situation. Donnie O'Sullivan is still there. Donnie, tell, uh, Donnie, tell us what's going on. Hey, hey, well, if you had some tear gas uh, was deployed here in the past few minutes, that's why you're seeing these people uh, coming down, the sort of last stragglers, really, who are here left at the Capitol. We've seen thousands of people move off the lawn uh, in the past few hours, and they've all been telling us how proud they are, how proud they are to be a part of this mob. They're repeating all the conspiracy theories that President Trump uh, has been spewing for months and that he spewed outside the White House today. And it's really just quite a surreal scene here, and I think we better move beyond this police line. Um, as they're really now moving all of us out of here, Wolf. Yeah, I just want you to be careful, Doni. Uh, be uh, careful over some... there. Go ahead, Doni. We're just hearing some really, you know, vile language 
uh, being directed at members of the media, um, people just, again, repeating these lies, uh, people who are totally uh, in denial that in just a few weeks, only a few hundred feet from here, Joe Biden is going to be inaugurated President of the United States. Uh, and it, you could see we're stepping over the fences and barriers that were broken uh, by these members of this mob earlier today. We were here, we, walk, we marched from the White House uh, after Trump's address. We marched with Trump supporters. Uh, and when they breached this barrier, it's happened all of a sudden uh, shortly after he concluded uh, speaking. Uh, and people just started pushing and moving up. And we've seen destruction uh, all around this area, Wolf. And we keep hearing uh, over and over again. I just heard somebody else saying, this is just the beginning. Wolf? Yeah, I assume they're saying, Doni, what the president himself just said in this videotape that he uh, posted on Twitter, that uh, he said the election was stolen. It was a landslide election that he claims he won. He says everyone knows it, especially the other side. These are total lies. But uh, it comes from the president of the United States, and it's encouraging these rioters to do what they're doing, right? Hey, hey, guys, come here. Hold oh, Sam. Over here. Yeah, that, that's right, Wolf. And I mean, you and I have, have discussed how conspiracy theories have really just are now playing such a prominent role in American life that you're seeing this all play out here. You know, we've spoken for years about Facebook and Twitter and their failure to act on conspiracy theories and hateful speech online. And we're seeing the results of that play out here on the streets of our nation's capital today. I mean, it, it, we're beyond the, the fact. In 2016, we heard about Russia trolls and people tried to write off anything about social media saying, oh, it's only a, it's only a few Facebook posts. What harm? Here's the harm. The harm of conspiracy theories, the harm of lies, the harm of people living in these online and Trump media echo chambers where they are so deluded and you hear they this. can't get to grips with reality and understand that Joe Biden will soon be president. Wolf. In 14 days, uh, he will become the president of the United States. Uh, Doni, just be careful over there. Uh, uh, I know that we're less than a half an hour uh, from uh, the uh, curfew that will be imposed here in the nation's capital. Hard to believe that this is going on at this sensitive moment right now. Uh, Brian Todd, uh, you're getting more information as well. What are you learning? Well, Wolf, uh, several law enforcement vehicles have just moved into the uh, plaza on the east side of the Capitol. Also, a large fire truck. And as you can see over here, there's an ambulance. Uh Eddie Gross, our photojournalist, will pan over there where they, they just put someone inside the ambulance. I believe they took that person out from inside the Capitol and put them in the ambulance. Uh, you see the riot police over here uh, forming a line around the center steps of the uh, east side of the Capitol. A short time ago, they moved the remaining rioters that were on the steps off slowly and peacefully. Uh, but, you know, look, as I heard Doni and some of our colleagues saying earlier, uh, a lot of these rioters are basically crowing that they, you know, they, they believe that they kind of won the day here. I heard one rioter yell at the police, uh, you didn't take it back, we gave it back. So they have some swagger here tonight. Uh, most of them have left the plaza at this point, but I think a big question now uh, is what's security going to be like overnight and into tomorrow morning? Uh, I just heard Alex reporting that they're moving people off the west side, and we're expecting uh, more police to come in uh, shortly on the east side here as some stragglers remain. But, uh, you know, the question is, are they going to clear everyone? Uh, is what's security going to be like overnight and into tomorrow morning? Uh, I just heard Alex reporting that they're moving people off the west side. And
Thanks, John. Uh, from world leaders who are shocked, uh, Jan Stoltenberg, the NATO Secretary General, says shocking scenes in Washington, D.C. The outcome of this democratic election must be respected. And there's more and more world leaders, John, uh, people all over the world can't believe what's going on uh, here in Washington, D.C. There's a threat to a peaceful transfer of power. No, and these uh, foot soldiers of a movement, they say, will make America great again or making America an embarrassment to the world today. Well, uh, Boris Johnson, the president's ally, the prime minister of the U.K., issuing a very similar statement. Uh, I'm getting messages, as you are, from friends, from sources, from government officials, ambassadors around the world, some here in Washington representing overseas countries. They just simply don't understand what is going on. They can't believe what they are seeing in the United States of America, which is supposed to be the beacon of the global democracies. It's supposed to be, you know, that shining city on a hill. Um, it's supposed to be, as many of the conservative Republicans helping the president with his fantasy challenge to an election that is over, uh, they always say America is an exceptional. They're for an exceptional America. Well, this does not make America an exceptional. Respecting our norms and our democracy doesn't. To that point, Wolf, I want to come back to something you reported to our viewers earlier today about what we're seeing, the deployment of the National Guard. You read the statement from the Acting Defense Secretary, we just go here? where he said the so Acting Jeremy, Defense Jeremy. Secretary and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff spoke with the Jeremy, Vice Jeremy. President, oh. Speaker Pelosi, Jeremy, Leader show. McConnell, Senator Schumer, Representative Hoyer. What's missing? The President. spoke to. They spoke to the Vice President, not the President of the United States. Where is he? Does he not want any part of this? Uh, he's, the, he's the president of the United States who doesn't attend coronavirus task force meetings, who refuses to meet with the experts on the pandemic that is sweeping across the country. And now the vice president has to coordinate with the Pentagon on the response. He's president for two more weeks. At least that's what the Constitution and the calendar says. But when, when you read that statement, it just jumped out at me that this is his job. It's thankful that the vice president's helping coordinate the security response here. Um, whether you agree or disagree with the Trump administration's politics, you should be grateful. to do his job to the very end. We see a standoff unfolding between uh, police uh, and these uh, rioters. Donnie O'Sullivan is watching it. You're right there, Donnie. Uh, tell us what you're seeing. Yeah, well, we are here at the police line. The police have pushed uh, the members of this mob, these Trump supporters, um, away off the Capitol grounds. And we are here at the, uh, the west front of the U.S. Capitol. We're actually at the spot uh, where the barriers were originally broken earlier today when we were here. And it's quite surreal, Wolf, because we're seeing these Trump supporters shout, shouting at these police, uh, accusing these police of being traitors. Uh, of course, uh, we always hear from the Trump uh, White House and, and Trump supporters how much uh, they, they love the police, but uh, seemingly uh, not tonight. Um, as we mentioned, tear gas was deployed uh, a few minutes ago. That's how they were able to, the police were able to move these people uh, down off uh, the, the lawn uh, outside the U.S. Capitol. And you could still uh, taste uh, remnants of that tear gas in the air. But, Wolf, and if our, if our, if our uh, photojournalist, uh, Jeremy, can just 
pan to left here, I mean, you see these Trump supporters, uh, people wearing the MAGA hats, uh, just shouting abuse at these members of the police in Washington who are doing their jobs. Wolf? Yeah, all right, uh, stand by, Doni. Uh, I want to go back to Jake. Uh, Jake, I understand uh, you have a special guest. Uh, that's right, Wolf, thanks so much. Joining us now on the phone, the mayor of Washington, D.C., Mayor Muriel Bowser. Mayor Bowser, thanks so much. Uh, for joining us. You put in place a 6 p.m. curfew. Um, how hearing? worried are you uh, about what might come tonight in D.C.? We're already hearing uh, from these, whatever you want to call them, rioters, terrorists, uh, anarchists, insurrectionists. We're already hearing from them that they're planning uh, to get even rougher uh, when it gets darker. Well, thanks, Jake, for, for having me on. We have a curfew in place, and we're advising everyone to leave the area, to vacate the Capitol grounds, uh, and to go to their place of residence or wherever they're staying, staying and preferably go back to their state. Uh, what we've seen at the Capitol today uh, is, un, is certainly unpatriotic. Uh, it's wrong and it's illegal. Uh, I have uh, fully deployed the Metropolitan Police Department, the, my, the D.C. Police Department, to assist the U.S. Capitol Police. Our police have entered the building and will establish um, a perimeter and enforce our curfew. Department to assist the U.S. Capitol Police. Our police have entered the building and will establish um, a perimeter and enforce our curfew. I have to say, um, I'm surprised that these uh, insurrectioners, right? Uh, insurrection enforce our curfew. I have to say, um, I'm surprised that these. Uh, responsibility of U.S. Capitol Police, and they don't report to you, they report to Congress, but what's your best understanding about why this was able to happen? Well, certainly we are, are there to assist the U.S. Capitol Police with, with any and all requests. I think you well, certainly we are, are there to assist the U.S. Capitol Police with, with any and all They can't imagine any other group being able to to to, uh, to cause in Congress. Well, I can certainly talk about our response to, to all of, of the protests and our assistance to our federal partners uh, and vice versa. And what we've seen here is a, a breach of our, our very democracy. And so we will continue to work with our partners to get it under control. In 15 minutes, the curfew drops, uh, and uh, and uh, anybody who's still out will be in violation of the curfew. Will they be arrested? Uh, our police are moving, and we'll work with uh, not just the D.C. police. We have called in to support D.C. streets and the U.S. Capitol response. Um, our neighbors, as well as the D.C. National Guard, I've requested the Guard from Maryland and Virginia to also come in. Uh, so people will be held accountable. We want everybody to move out and to move out quickly. But the curfew will be enforced. So, so is that a yes? They will be arrested? I mean, the Metropolitan Police Department has been told that if these protesters are still there after the curfew, they will be arrested? They are going to deploy in a deploy in a safe way and enforce the D.C. curfew. I, so that's a yes? Well, I can't tell you every single strategy that the police are going to use, um, but they have the curfew as a tool uh, to move people out. Has anybody been arrested today? Do you know? Um, there have been many arrests today and uh, yesterday. I don't have the full readout of the number of arrests. We expect to provide that by this evening. The entire D.C. National Guard uh, has been activated. Do you have the resources you need, Mayor Bowser, to keep Washington, D.C. safe, to get control of the Capitol? 
Uh, we have uh, we have been in touch with. Uh, we're working with uh, many of federal uh, resources, including the guards from a number of states that I just mentioned, uh, and we uh, will continue to get the resources that we need throughout the night. President Trump released a video. Uh, he told his supporters to go home, but but he also expressed sympathy for them. He said he loved them. He also continued his blatant lies about the election. Um, do you think that video was helpful, or did it end up throwing more fuel on the fire? Um, well, the fuel has been thrown been thrown on the fire for four straight years, and certainly in the last week, um, we've heard this president, outgoing president, other current elected officials incite violence, uh, and we ha see the result of of that violence. So I didn't get a chance to see the video, but we continue to urge the president to tell his supporters. Uh, that they are putting police officers, innocent people in harm's way, and they need oh, to go home. To Do you know anything about the shooting today on Capitol Hill? A woman was shot. Is she okay? Do you know, was she uh, one of the rioters or, or was she uh, someone else? I know, else? Uh, Jake, that matter is under investigation and we President. can't confirm the details at this time. Is there anything you can tell us about the pipe bombs that have been reported having been found outside the Republican National Committee, the DNC, and the U.S. Capitol. We know that we responded to a credible, to credible reports of at least two incendiary devices. I can't give you any specifics about them right now. Is there anything more you want to tell anybody watching this who might be in Washington, D.C. right now? Uh, we're, we're telling, and our, our residents have heeded our uh, guidance to stay at home. We want everybody protesting and rioting on the Capitol grounds and anywhere else to go home. Uh, and they need to start moving out right now. All right, we see some people moving. I don't know if they're moving out right now. I certainly hope. Uh, that they are. Mayor Bowser, uh, best of luck uh, battling this. I know in addition to this, you have the COVID crisis you're dealing with. You this is you need this like you need another hole in your head. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Bye. Uh, I mean, it, you know, uh, one of the things that I think you're looking at these images, you have to ask yourself uh, just as an American is Donald Trump uh, is going to be president for two more weeks. Mm -hmm. And can the United States last that, that two weeks with, with him? As president of the United States, this is somebody who has not only uh, turned a blind eye to a deadly pandemic uh, that has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans. Yesterday was the deadliest day in the U.S. for the coronavirus pandemic of, since it began. But we have a president now inciting uh, violence uh, and uh, praising those who commit acts of violence. And I think um, it has to be asked, uh, does the vice president, does the, ca does the cabinet need to step in, invoke the 25th Amendment, and remove him from office before he wreaks even more uh, damage. Uh, Abby, you and I were talking. Uh, Jay Timmons, uh, former Republican operative, now the head of the National Association of Manufacturing, put out a statement today saying that Pence should think about invoking the 25th Amendment. I mean, we've already heard that the uh, acting De Secretary of Defense spoke not with President Trump, but with Vice President Pence about deploying the National Guard to the streets of D.C. to protect the Capitol. Why would that be the case? We have a sitting United States president who is um, supposed to be on the job and apparently is not. And I think that this is...